But what a man has no power when he talks. He talks full of words, but no expressions in there. He invokes no feelings when he talks. No one listens. Why would he put more energy into talking when it's not worth it? He has zero aura. Oh man, what are you doing? The caveman. The caveman uses few words, but expresses everything through them. He talks with his deep voice and he, and he attracts energy simply by being in the room and talking to someone. People describe him as high energy and masculine. People instantly respect him in every single way possible. He talks full of energy and leaves details out. The difference between the two men is just... I'm not gonna waste your time with this video. The biggest thing you can do to talk with more power is to use power phrases. And we're not talking about some cringy little fucking YouTuber thing like, I am strong, I am powerful, and affirming that in their fucking power pose in the fucking toilet. <laughs> Come on, let's do this, bring it home. Let's another deep breath, one, two, three, inhale. Hold the breath, exhale slowly. Ah, yeah, big smile. Big, big smile. Repeat after me. Say, I rock. Say, I love my life. <laughs> Say, I am the creator. Woohoo! In, in like the fucking mirror or something. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about power phrases. You see, words have a certain power. And we're going to understand how much power words can have in this video. And the more words you talk on one topic, the more power the topic loses. Imagine a guy went to war and he is like in a, in a lone survivor type mission, right? And he's the only one who comes out alive. And now he goes on podcasts and stuff and writes 50 books about it. And he talks so much about the matter that everyone is bored by it and that everyone forgot how much of a hero this man is. This is the mistake many men make. They go into so much detail, they talk so much on one topic that it's not worth anything what they talk about. Instead, what would be way better would be that he just writes one book, goes on one or two podcasts, which are absolute bangers, and then leaves. And maybe makes videos about it or fucking talks about other things. Because when you talk about topics much, you get reduced to that topic. And suddenly that soldier who was a hero and was a husband and a fucking sick bench presser or something, right? Imagine all his character traits. They all would re be reduced down to that one story. And of course, it's a, it's, it's a very exciting story for your life to be in, right? But if you're reduced to only one story, you cannot be that powerful, aren't you, right? <laughs> So power phrases is this idea of saying less than necessary. If I say I have been meditating for two years now, people who relate to me, people who have also done this will respect me very much because they know how much discipline it takes to meditate every single day for two years. And people who cannot relate will not relate. And for them, it will not be powerful. But I don't care about those people who I cannot relate to, right? If I can relate to you, only then I can teach you something. And only then I can, you, 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 can, you can follow me or I can follow you or whatever. To people who cannot relate to me, I will simply just blur them out and just focus on the people that I can relate to because only those people are important for my life. We'll later talk about ways you can make yourself more relatable to others. Now, power phrases, as I said, is the idea of saying less than necessary. In the Bible, we have this many, many times. It's like he went through the desert of Sinai. If you've ever walked through a desert, you will know how much pain that is. He walked a hundred miles is a power phrase. 
He walked a hundred miles. That's a power phrase. Walking a hundred miles is painful. It takes discipline and it just tells me everything about your character that I need to know. I know that you're disciplined. I know that you can work through pain. I know that you're not going to fuck me over if hard times arrive. I know that I can trust you if you've done this. Right, it tells me so much and it is so powerful that you that you have this much confidence in yourself to just say these one these words, right? I walked a hundred miles. And this is the this is like the first principle that I learned about talking with more power in real life, right? Of course in these videos I go into very much detail and I do this because I want to teach you something. But if I want to seem powerful to someone, I just say the power phrase of that thing. And the way you can create your own power phrases is you look at your life, you look at what you have achieved, you look at what you've done, and then you reduce it down to the shortest thing, which is usually I am X, I have X, I have done X, I have went through X. And then people can relate to this. People who know how much pain that is that you're talking about currently will relate to you and they will respect you then and they will make you more powerful. And the people who cannot relate to you that you don't even care about that much, if we're being honest, those people will just go away. So this is a fantastic way of also polarizing between two groups, the people who you don't care about and the people who you care about. Now the next thing, which is how to be relatable. How would you think is someone relatable? And the phrase that I have in my mind when I think about relatability is make it meme. Talk about the meme of the thing. For example, when you are doing black roll, the outside of your legs hurts so much and you never know if your leg is like tensed or if, if your muscles, if, if you're like flexing your legs ex like by accident. So you're like, so you're like trying to, to stretch your legs while, while you're black rolling. So you make sure that you're not tensing your legs up. And just by telling you this, if you do black roll, you just became related to me, right? You just, you just see, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. If I just say, oh, black roll is painful. Everyone knows that black roll is painful. But if you've had a little bit of experience with it, then you will know, okay, yeah, that there's a problem on the outside of your, of your legs. And maybe there are things that are more meme than this. What are memes? Memes are things that are so relatable that we we'll laugh about them. It's the thing no one talks about. It's like, POV, you're taking a shit in the middle of the night, but you kind of don't feel like you, you should take a shit, right? These kinds of things that no one talks about yet. And then someone thinks, oh, I'm, I'm thinking about this constantly. And maybe some other people think about it too. So let's make a picture of it and let's make, let's, let's, let's image the feeling for them. And this is the way, the, the, the number one way you make yourself relatable. Go into, go into the detail and then use the power phrase, right? Go into the detail of stretching, right? When I, when I do the, the quadriceps and, and, and hip flexor stretch, my knee always hurts because it's on the floor, right? <laughs> um, or, when I'm in the gym and there is a girl, I ego lift. But those things make you very relatable because many people experience them. And I'm not telling you to lie about these things. Of course not. But talk about the real things you do and talk about the meme experience you would have or you have, right? Talk about the small things, the small little, the small little things that no one has talked about. And this is how you make yourself relatable because all of a sudden people will see, oh yeah, th this guy thinks about this too. And then they will like you and then they will think about you, which gives you power. Then the next thing is how to talk. So the way to talk, not the things you say, which is what we uncovered last, but how you talk. Every time before I talk, even on camera, I clear my throat and I, 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 I then just visualize deep voice. I don't know how to explain this properly, but I just visualize 
like deep voice. It's as if you're getting in position for a bench, right? You're, you're kind of have your, your little sweet spot where your shoulders are. And then you, then you tighten your core up and then it feels so, so perfect how your chest moves and how your whole body moves. And you just visualize this kind of groove that you're in and just visualize how a deep voice kind of feels, how it, how, how, how you want it to sound. It's very difficult to explain this, but just visualize getting in the groove for a deep voice. What can also help with this is breathing deeply because what happens when two animals come together, they observe each other by body language. And if you breathe deeply while you talk, so in real life, you would talk like this. So you would say something and then you would just mid sentence, just take a deep breath. And I'm trying to do this in my videos, but oftentimes, you know, I'm just in the flow of talking and then I'll just like take this little anxiety breath as I like to call it. And the thing is, when you're talking to someone and you're taking only these anxiety breaths and not deep breaths through your nose, what will then happen is they will pick up on this because it's all subconscious, right? 90% of our perception is subconscious. We see someone with, with bad posture, bad body language, and we instantly evaluate them as low status because that's the way nature taught us this. So if we want to talk with more power, we need to, we need to think about living with more power. We need to think about having a posture that has more power. I'm not telling you to sit like this with a, with a perfect back and mm, you can sit, you can sit on straight, but you will just need to think about this one thing that I think about when I think about a powerful position, a powerful position for me is a position, is a, <laughs> is a position that I would be comfortable with when someone runs into me full speed. Now you can alter this and you can say, yeah, but unsta instability is also good. But instability sy symbolizes femininity. And of course, sometimes you, you, you can do feminine positions, but you need to just think about, would I be okay if someone ran into me full speed right here at my chest? Because this will ultimately eliminate this kind of posture because if someone, and trust me, I've experienced this, if someone runs into you full speed and you got your shoulders forward and someone runs into you like this, you're gassed, like, like there is no lungs in, there's no, there's no air in your lungs. So stay, so stay open, stay like this, right? Stay attentive and just think, okay, I got my hands not in like, not, not in like a weird position like, like this. I'm not fiddling around. I'm not fumbling something. And then just be powerful. I, it, for me, this is kind of natural now because I've practiced this a lot, but for you, this might be unnatural and you just need to get over this barrier of feeling unconfident for a short amount of time. But in return for that, you will feel more comfortable and more confident and you will talk and live with more power in the future. So it's kind of the delayed gratification option doing this instead of just staying the way you are. It's way more comfortable not being powerful because powerfulness is sometimes not nice to be not the victim. If you're the weakest in the group, no one will pay attention to you. But if you are strong, people will pay attention to you and people will gravitate towards you. So being powerful always creates a sort of monopole for energy. And people will kind of like talk to you and stuff and you need to be able to manage that well. But you will all learn this by your life if you just implement the things I tell you here. You've learned in this video to be relatable, to talk with a deep voice because deep voice is important. Deep voice is very important and being calm in a situation is important. I almost forgot to tell you this. This is one of the most important things about this. 5% of what we say is the words we talk about and the rest is all just how we position ourselves, the depth of our voice, the, the energy we give off when we talk. And what I tell you is give more energy into the way you talk than into the words you say. 
You can practice the words you say, but practice the why you say something. Why do I talk to this camera right now? Because I want to teach you how to talk more powerful because it was a huge, huge problem for me when I was younger. And I wanted to basically help my younger self. This is how I'm so calm and confident before this camera because I envision myself talking to my younger self right now. And I'm more powerful than him. I am greater than him. Therefore, I am, I'm confident and calm. And this is the lesson you should take from this, from the last point on this list or from the last two points for that matter. Because if you're breathing deeply and if you're talking deeply and if you're talking with confidence and with calmness, then you're symbolizing strength. You're symbolizing that you are stronger than the person you're talking to. You, When you talk about or talk to someone who is more powerful than you, clearly more powerful than you, then your body language is going to be messed up. I promise. You're going to be talking in a high-pitched voice. Imagine meeting someone like Hamza or Andrew Tate or me. And... You're, you're trying to take a picture with them and then you, and then you fumble your phone because you're so constrained and you're like this and, and how are they? They're like, yeah, cool. Let's take a picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Not because, not because it happens so often to them. I guarantee you the first time this happened, they were as calm as now because they know they're more powerful than you. This is why big people are always so confident, right? The guy with the 50 inch bicep, <laughs> no, I like that, but you know what the fuck I'm, t you know what I mean, right? The guy with the giant arms and the giant body who can fight, he's going to be confident in every single situation because he knows he's more powerful than the guy he's talking to. And if you just know this, and if, if you just know why you're talking to them and why they are talking to you, and you're constantly thinking about the purpose of what you're doing, then the people who are around you will want to cling to that purpose. They will want to do the same things as you do, because it all seems so making sense. And this is what people crave these days. Their lives barely have a purpose. It barely makes sense to be them. And therefore, if you can give them purpose, just in the things you say, if you just know, okay, this is why I'm saying this, this is why I'm doing that, this is why they're doing this. If you just know this and you give them the sense of purpose and you give them the sense of mission whilst they're with you, you will elevate the, 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 the quality of time they spend with you. And then they will crave the time they spend with you. Because they will think every single time I'm with that guy, I feel so full of mission, I feel full of purpose. I feel calm and they will adapt to your energy if you're strong. Yesterday or the day before yesterday, so on Tuesday of this week, I called up a guy from a watch store um, because I wanted to look around the store a little bit. And first, I wanted to be really hectic, right? I wanted to, to get this call done fast and everything. But that guy had a very deep voice and just subconsciously, I, I thought like, yeah, um, why not have a deep voice too? And he talked very slowly and calmly. And then, then I got calm. So calm people down, talk slower, talk with more sense to it, talk with power, talk with the power phrases and talk with the meme, like make it meme. Okay. Yes. These, these are the three things you learned these three things today. And if you liked this video, if you liked the way I'm teaching, and if you want to see more of these videos I'm posting daily, sometimes twice a day on this channel, you can subscribe for free. It's a win-win for both of us. Master your mind. And by the way, I am not a teacher, okay? I'm a student of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. He's greater than I am. And if you want to learn from the source, I learned from Read the Bible. I learned from Jesus Christ and I just want to pass the lessons on to you. Praise the Lord.